stop it. Morning, Nelson. Morning, living room. What a terrible mess you look this morning. delights have you got for me today? Yeah, well, I did have a few friends around last night. How many? Oh, just enough to stop you feeling redundant. <laughs> With the rubbish you make, I've got a job here for life. Can you hear me? Oh, no. I'm not having this. Two hours I was yesterday cleaning this up. I'm not having this. Have you seen what your friends have done to my living room? Have you seen the wine stains? The tomato ketchup on the mushroom rug? I am sorry, Benjamin. I am not having my work treated with such contempt. You have a lovely home here. Much better furniture than I have. And you treat it all with utter contempt. You'll just have to get someone else to look after you. I've done my best to be kind and understanding as you're all alone in the world, but that living room this morning is the last straw. What's that? That's your trip for a month's salary. In lieu of notice. more of it. And that's a fact. If you want to get to the station, Julie, I'm off now. Just coming, Dad. Looks very good. Yeah, yeah, it's dried nicely. Oh, hello, Mr. Chubb. I wondered if I'm... Oh, hello, Judy. Hello, Ben. Come in. I'm glad I caught you before you left. Just go. You having another lovely day at home, then? Don't you want to go to work? No, it's boring. Answering the phone all day. I'm having a, a party on Saturday, and uh, I wondered if you'd like to come. I gave one last week. Yeah, but this is special. It's for a mate of mine you haven't met before. He's quite a nice bloke. A bit like uh, John Travolta. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's a farewell party. But the most interesting thing about him is that he's cracked it. Cracked what? Well, you know, he's just 18 and knows exactly what he wants to do. Oh, he's not too heavy, is he? No, he's just right. Are you ready then, Julie? Just coming, Dad. It's going to be a huge party, though, and I get my new big speakers out. So, uh, come about nine. My place should be really uh, pulsating by then. Well, you could have worse neighbours, Mr Chapman. Could I? Have your old dad. So I'll... Uh... I'll see you, Julie. Come on. Have you run Mr Blackmore? What? Your accountant. No. I know what he wants, though. Well, he does have your best interest at heart, you know, as the man in charge of your trust fund. Perhaps he thinks you're spending too much money. I mean, what would you do if you spent it all and ended up broke? I mean, people do, you know. Well, I'd get a job. Or else I'd be unemployed, like most of my friends. 
If you looked after your money, you wouldn't have to take a job. Yes, but is that what it's all about, Rosie? Doing nothing all day? Oh, I don't know why I don't enjoy it more. Sometimes I think there's something peculiar about me. What do you think, Rose? I haven't got time for one of those discussions. And anyway, Mr Blackmore just wants you to sign some documents. And if you ignore him, you know what will happen. He'll send a messenger round here and embarrass you in front of your friends. I have your best interests at heart too, you know. this quiet. Honest, where's the party then? It's a surprise party. What, um, with no people? No, in the kitchen. I don't want him to see you. Ta, this is my friend Rod. Hello. This is Ben, who's giving the party. I just met him at the disco and he said um, he hasn't had any supper. Oh, great. Well, uh, go and see Rose. She'll look after you. Sure. <laughs> he makes me laugh. Really? Listen, you don't mind me bringing him. Why should I? You see my blue stilettos, Dad? No. Nice and quiet next door. I think that little chat I had with Ben has had some effect. Oh, well, he said he was going to bring out his new speakers. Hmm. Speakers or no? I think he takes more notice of me than you give me credit for. He's coming. Just some things I won't be using again. Oh, great! Well, look, coming for a coffee. No, I'd better get back. I uh, haven't finished tidying my room. Oh, but it's Saturday night. You're off tomorrow. Your mum's got the rest of her life to tidy up your room. All right. Quick cup. Sure, it was me. Yeah, it was you. (laughs) 
We had some great times. Mm. You off tomorrow then? Yeah. Shame. I bet the social life's good up there. Well, I'm not sure. University, what... eh? All those parties. Sounds a riot, Mark. Uh, I'm not going to university. Oh, Doreen just said you were. No. Actually, I'm going into a monastery. A monastery? What, with monks and that? Oh, I'm really knackered. knackered. You got the tea, Rose? Hello, Claudette. Oh. That bloke you're with is chatting up Dory next door. Ooh. <laughs> you right, Mark? Yeah, having a great time. Oh, I'm glad you turned up tonight. You've added a certain tone to this party. <laughs> Can't think why. Well, in a way, you're trendy. <laughs> trendy? <laughs> I've been giving everything up. I'll have nothing. Oh, well, perhaps that's everything. I don't know. I just thought it was worth trying. Perhaps I should give it all up. I don't see you becoming a monk. <laughs> <laughs> no, perhaps not. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. No. I'm guest of honour. <laughs> Not bad, this party. I'm glad. <laughs> ben, would I still be invited if I didn't live next door? What do you mean? Well, my dad can only complain about your parties if I'm here. Yeah, that was the reason at first. And now? Oh, I don't know, really. Because I like you. Well, why do you come? Is it because of my money? Oh, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> When we first moved into the flat, I was intrigued. I mean, you living all alone in this big house, parties any time you like, and you never having to work. And now? Because I always have the top 20. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. If I had your money, I'd be suspicious too. Well, are you saying I don't really know who my friends are? Oh, well, the only way you can find out for sure is to give all your money away. Oh, that's a bit drastic. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry you haven't got any parents, but at least you don't have people nagging at you all the time, telling you what to do. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes you miss that. I try to fill the gap. That's why he employs me. <laughs> you should try coming to my place, Ben. Get plenty of nagging there. Ben. It's for you. Special messenger wants you to sign something. It's Mr. Blackmore. Now, I told you this would happen, didn't I? I forgot to ring. Pressing scripts. Why don't you try these Scotch eggs? They're Rose's speciality. No. Australian manganese. ICI equity stock in JD Electronics. Want to know what all this money makes me feel? Wonderful. Oh, you can speak then as well as eat, can you? No, not wonderful. Middle-aged. I feel great, middle-aged, 30 years before I have to. Ah, mid textiles. I'm worrying about my shares going up and down. Tell him Mr. Blackmore when to buy, when to sell. I spend two hours a day doing my business. Safeguarding my future. It's now I care about the life I'm done living now. It's today that worries me, not the... Not the life I might be living when I'm 40. Oh, I've got all this money and I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored. <laughs> bored with money? How could you be bored? 
Probably not like. No. You're all taking him seriously. I suppose you're all now. Now throw into him because he's rich. <laughs> Boy, mommy. It's a joke. You are so much of everything. You make me want to puke. It's just a parasite. You want for a nap? I tell you. You all make me want to spew up. It's more likely to be those 27 sausage rolls he's eaten. Isn't he rude? No, he's right. He's right. Oh, perhaps he's a signpost. I don't really know where my friends are. Ben. I don't know what is the matter with you. I don't know why you aren't happy. I mean, you have everything. Yes, I know, but what I don't have are any ordinary problems, like... Girlfriends and work and acne. Well, I can get you a couple of girls who could give you a lot of problems. <laughs> Females. No, I couldn't cope with that. Oh, he was right. That Mohican bloke was right. I am a parasite. Oh, oh, well, I do nothing. I'm useless. Dead loss. Do you mean that? Yes. No, you don't. I do. I do. Can I come here and do my workouts? Workouts? Yeah, you know, body control, aerobics and that. <laughs> what? Keep fit? No, not just that. I'm trying to be a dancer. I had an audition for a summer season in Eastbourne. And I've got a recall. Well, is that good? It means I've been shortlisted. But the thing is, I can't actually practice the routines because the flat's too small. But you've got that lovely big room in there. I'd make a lot of noise, of course. Yes, you would. We'll start first thing tomorrow morning. Really? Are you sure? Do you really mean that? Why not? There's a key. Wonderful. Look, if you change your I mind... I won't. Ben, thanks! <laughs> thanks. Come and dance. I'm going to show you my audition key. Oh, hello. Sorry to disturb you. You're not. My battery's flat. Do you think I could plug a chip, my charger into a socket somewhere just to get the van started? In the kitchen. Ta. Wipe your feet first. If your battery was flat, how did you drive home last night? Didn't have to. I live in the van. What, in that old bucket of rust? Well, you can't expect much for 65 quid these days, can you? How long have you lived in your van? A couple of years. Well, locally, we're round and about. People don't like it if I'm parked too long in their streets. So I have to keep moving on. I should think so. What do you do? All sorts. I'm one of the unwaged at the moment, but I had this good job on a building site and making tea, holiday relief. Have you, uh, you never lived with your parents? Oh, why? Till I was 15. Where are they? In Yorkshire, somewhere. Last I heard. I didn't fit in up there. 
you like some toast? Well, that'd be a nicely. I can't make toast on a single burner. Breakfast! Is that Claudette in there? Yeah, doing a uh, dance workouts. I just have some cornflakes. Hello, Rod. You disappeared early last night. Hi. But I was meaning to get in touch with you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Could I use your address from the Social Security? No, you can't. Well, not really. See, the thing is, I may get this job in Eastbourne, and my mum doesn't like strange people coming around. What do you want her address for? You can't get Social Security unless you've got a place to live. Well, you've got your van. But they say my van's not my home. Well, I say it is. But I don't get nowhere. No address, no money. I suppose we haven't got the money to have an address. Well, that's me. <laughs> I'm too poor to get Social Security. Well, I'll use this address. Really? I only come round to collect my cheque. I only have to say I'd live here. Well, you don't have to lie. You can live here. I, uh... Did you speak? No. Park your van in my garden. No, you don't mean that. Yeah, I do. No. You don't want me out there in your garden. I sleep in it and, and everything. Well, I sleep in this house and everything. And besides, you'd be doing me a favour. Oh. Because... Because it's the first time I've done something useful. Anyway, it'd be nice to have someone to talk to in the evenings. Stop me becoming a parasite. Look, I'm, I'm sorry about... Mm. Hello, Mr Chapman. Ben, there's a terrible old van parked outside my house. Oh, it's all right, Mr Chapman. It's not staying. Uh, my friend lives in it. Hmm. I can believe that. Would you mind moving it, please? I'm speaking to you not only as a police officer, but as your neighbour, Ben. It's all right, Mr Chapman. It's not staying. I'm going to move it as soon as I've charged up his battery. Oh. Oh, um, that's all right, then. Yeah, it's going to move it into my garden. Is my new garden lodger. Rod, your new neighbour, Mr Chapman. Chill, Mum. Morning, Landing. Morning, Rose. Morning, Ben. Morning, Ben. Morning, Claudette. Morning, Ben. Morning, Mr Chapman. Say hello to Julie for me. Rodney, your tea. 